there's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. We've learned that the oscillator is tuned by the variable condenser and is added to the radio signal in the converter tube. Now let's learn a little bit about how that signal is actually created. Looking at a close-up of our schematic, we see that the oscillator circuit is comprised of the converter tube cathode, grids 1 and 2, the oscillator transformer, one section of the variable condenser, a resistor, and two capacitors. The transformer primary sends a positive voltage to grid 2. This attracts electrons from the negatively charged cathode and current begins to flow to grid 2. The magnetic field from the primary is picked up by the secondary, sending a positive voltage to grid 1. This causes even more current to flow. The resistor only allows so much current from cathode to grid 1 though, and as it reaches its limit, it reduces the voltage on grid 1, causing less current to flow to grid 2, and less current to flow through the resistor. Very quickly though, grid 2 and the transformer start current flow to increase again, and the process repeats hundreds or thousands of times a second. This creates our oscillator frequency, which alternates at the same rate. Also in the circuit is capacitor C12 used as a bypass, and C13, which keeps direct current off grid 1. C2 and 11 are the oscillator section of our variable condenser. Their capacitance, along with the coil's inductance, rated in henrys, determine the oscillator frequency. As with the antenna coil, the oscillator coil in our radio is actually three coils. One primary, a secondary for the AM band, and a secondary for the shortwave band. The same switch that selected the secondary in the antenna coil also selects the secondary in the oscillator coil. Antique radio coils usually work fine, but sometimes the tiny wires can become damaged. Coils are easily tested with a multimeter and should show a measurable resistance. If it tests open or as a short, the coil will require repair. Fortunately, the coils in our radio were all working correctly. It is possible to fix or rewind a broken coil, but it can be a delicate and time-consuming operation. Be sure to join me for the next video where I'll explain all about how the first IF transformer works. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.